everyone welcome to the way champions podcast this week this is your host john o'sullivan with a little short snippet of the podcast this week i've been on the road a lot uh traveling had some crazy travels with weather and lots of stuff being shuffled around and so i ended up being a couple days late on the podcast this week and decided to just throw together some of my thoughts on a topic that i was discussing a lot over the last week or two or you know sort of the parent coach relationship and engagement and what that means um and then above it all, sort of accountability. What is accountability? And and how does accountability go both ways from coach to athlete, athlete to coach, coach to parent, parent to coach, and things like that. And so that's the topic uh, for this week. Also been talking a, a ton, Jerry and I just uh, doing a lot of work, getting ready for our conference in August. Um, I hope you've checked that out. Just go to Wave Champion, uh, go to changingthegameproject.com and click on Wave Champions Conference, uh, and you'll see the amazing uh, event that we have pulled together. And we have got some super exciting announcements coming up here in the next uh, couple of weeks about some potential guest speakers as well. So super excited for that event. Check that out, please. Um, so this week, I'm just going to dive in and, and share some thoughts. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. And you can do that by emailing me, uh, john at changingthegameproject.com or leaving some uh comments under the video here on YouTube. If you happen to be watching this on our YouTube channel, if you're listening and you want to watch on YouTube, just search for at way of champions podcast on YouTube and you'll find that as well. I don't have all the episodes up yet, but I'm getting them uploaded and uh, it's going pretty good. So, uh, but some of our favorites are up there right away and it's cool to see some subscribers start and a lot of views on a bunch of them already. So uh, check that out. Um, but the discussion this week went a lot to coaches and, and parents and this engagement between the two. And even beyond that, um, <clears throat> how can we get along better as coaches and parents? And as many coaches say to me, but no matter what I do, sometimes these parents just lose the plot. And so I always go back to this idea that um, Sky, uh, Sky Eddie has shared with us on here that you know, there's a small percentage of parents that really will never get it no matter what, but most of them are just stressed and they're just scared. And really what they want to know is that the coach sees their kid. Coach wants uh, to, what's best for their son or their daughter. And I think if you're that type of coach, you're going to have the best chance of having good relationships with parents. Now, how do you become that type of coach? I think that's really the question that we have to ask ourselves over and over and over um, and, and realize that it's not a one-time thing. It's it's an all-time thing. So really what I have to do is, is make sure that kids feel and parents know that I, I see your child. So how, how do I do that? Number one, we talk about on this podcast, the rule of one, one person, one comment, one time, right? So making those comments, being just as intentional as you are about fitness or your tactical plan, where is your intention about today? I'm going to make sure I get to these four or five kids and I'm going to be intentional about catching them being good or just having that comment saying, hey, what's going on in, you know, in your track season or your basketball or, hey, is your family, uh, how was that trip that you guys made to yada, yada, yada? Something personal that tells that child that you see them builds that trust. Same thing to a parent via email, via text. How was your trip? How are things going? Taking that moment, I mean, knowing them, knowing their names, uh, all that, super important. Now, the other thing that I think is really important is when you see one of your athletes, one of your people struggling, do you go out of your way to acknowledge that as well? One of the ways that you build that trust with parents is you send them that text, you send them the email and say, hey, uh, I just wanted to check in. Johnny hasn't been himself lately. 
he's kind of been struggling. Uh, he's not playing as well as he has in the past. His confidence seemed down. He seems distracted, losing focus, whatever, whatever it is. And just ask them, is there anything I need to know? Have you noticed this as well? And what I can promise you is that almost every time you do that, your response from the parent will be like, oh, my, yes, such and such. This is happening at school. This has been happening at home. We have an illness. His grandmother died. Marital things, whatever it is, um, you will almost always find that that parent uh, will give you, yeah, we didn't want to tell you. We didn't want to burden you with this. But yes, this is going on at home. Now, think about that. As a parent, as a parent myself, when I get that note from a teacher, when I get that note from a um, uh, a coach that they see my child and they see the same struggle or they see, um, you know, not the same person that I used to see, that tells me they care. That tells me they are super invested. And that's the kind of thing that as a coach, that's what I call the deposits in the trust bank. You're building trust and, and your trust will never come from just your ability, how much you know about hockey or soccer or lacrosse or wrestling, it doesn't matter what you coach. Like that's the big myth for coaches that, oh, you know, it's just where I played or how good of an athlete I was, therefore everyone will trust me. But no, you need that connection. You need to be believable. You need to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. You need to admit when you're wrong and when you screwed up. When you do those things, now you make deposits in the trust bank. And when you make those deposits, then you get the opportunity to make withdrawals. You get the opportunity to screw up and not have a parent go off her rocker or off his rocker because you, you, you know, raised your voice to their kid because you demanded more, because you made that kid uncomfortable, because you made them play a different position, whatever it is, right? Because that's our job as coaches. We want to be uh, demanding without being demeaning. We want to be hard and we want to teach our athletes to be comfortable being uncomfortable, being on the edge of their comfort zone. That's how they get better. And a lot of parents push back against that because it frustrates their child. It, it makes their child upset. But we have to build that trust and we have to communicate why we're doing it and how we're doing it and the grand plan in mind. Now, I still meet a lot of coaches out there who say, well, I've got all this experience. I don't want to tell the parents what's going on. I don't feel the need that I should have to do that. Well, great. How is that working for you? And what they often tell me is it's, it's not working for them. <laughs> They're struggling. So this is our wake-up call, coaches. If it's not working, if it's not working for one of your athletes, you don't tell them, oh, we'll keep doing the same thing. You say shift, adjust. And if that's not working, if you keep running season after season, group after group, um, having issues with your parents, at some point, the only common denominator is you. Now, again, are there parents out there that have lost the plot? Yes. We see them on the sidelines. We see them on videos screaming at referees and coaches. I totally get that. There's some people that, no matter what you do, they're not going to get it. But I truly believe that the vast majority of coaches uh, and parents out there are good people. And we want to work together. And we all want the same thing, which is the best performance for the child and the best performance for the team. And we don't always see, you know, what what makes that work or, or um, you know, the same way to accomplish that goal. And ultimately then that's the job of the coach to say, well, guess what? I'm the coach. If, if you want to do things differently sometime, someday you coach. Okay. But I think just to reiterate that, see the child, communicate, see when things are going well, catch them being good. See when things are not going well and, and, and notice that and put deposits in the bank so that you have the opportunity to make withdrawals later, okay? Now, <clears throat> while you're doing this, you can establish appropriate boundaries. And this is really important. I wrote about this in the whole sort of parent coach chapter in Every Moment Matters. Um, 
there should be appropriate boundaries. We don't have, we don't talk um, about a game performance or anything about a game, 24 hour rule, 48 hour rule, whatever works for you till the emotion is out of it. We establish boundaries around what is appropriate to talk about. We can talk about your child. We can talk about how they played their performance, things they can work on, things like that. We don't talk about other people's kids. We don't talk about tactics or things that the you know coaching exper expertise is is required for uh, or understanding what we're doing because you don't actually come to practice every day and understand it. Um, so we establish appropriate guidelines and boundaries around what's appropriate, but then we have to have those conversations. Now, once we've had them, we can say, okay, we we agree to disagree. Fair enough. We're not always going to see the same thing, but have that conversation. Now, uh, the other thing I told these coaches in the last couple of weeks is I, I really truly believe for me, the longer the email, the shorter my response. The longer the text, the shorter my response. And once something's over a paragraph, usually my response is, do you have time for a phone call? Do you have time to meet? Because in person, because in, uh, in by voice at least, you will have the opportunity to be a human being, to sense emotion, to feel that their emotion, and to convey yours. And that doesn't come across in text, and it doesn't come across in email. And if you get in this endless email chain and back and forth with the parent, it never goes well. So have that conversation in person. Hear people out. And then stick to your guns of, well, this is what we're doing. And this is the way I see it. And I hear what you're saying. They just want to be listened to, right? So within those boundaries, listen. And this all comes down to communication, right? Communication. Now, most parents are never asked, like, what do you want out of this season? What do you want from this? What are your goals for your son or your daughter this season? What are the goals for the team? Uh, our friend, I wrote it in the book about Nate Sanderson, our friend of this podcast. And, um, you know, Nate goes with these five questions with his to, to the parents on his teams of what are your goals for your son or daughter? What are their goals for the team? Uh, what do you want their experience to be like if they can't achieve those goals? What do you want their sporting experience to be like this season? What do you want your parent experience to be like this season? What can you do to contribute to that experience? And what do you need from the coaches? And what they often say from the coaches is communicate. Let us know what's happening. Let us know what's going on. And what they say um, from their experience, right? That now you have in writing something from the parents of how they can um, have a role and a way to contribute to the overall well-being of the group. And I think that's, again, what most people just want. Now, doing some goal setting is super helpful as well. So having uh, a child write down what are you know three personal goals and three team goals I have for this season for this team, and then having the parents write down those same things. What are three goals I have for my child? What are three goals I have for the team? And have them do those things independently and then compare. Compare those results and see if parent and child are on the same page because if they are, great. But most of your problems will come from when the child wants something completely different out of the sporting experience than the parent does. And helping the parent see that it's their child's experience, that they need to own it, that it's got to be their goals and their dreams and, and not yours, mom and dad, um, will help get them on the same page. Or at least help you to recognize where's the tension coming from. Mom and dad want the kid to play at Stanford and the kid doesn't want to play in high school. That's a problem, and that's going to affect the parent relationship with you and what it really is is frustration with their own child because their child doesn't want to, quote, use their gifts, <laughs> okay? Um, and, and really what this all comes down to, and my last sort of thought here is accountability. What is accountability? Um, and, and all the different places, as coaches, we hold players accountable for certain behaviors, uh, as players, they should hold us coaches accountable for knowing what we're talking about, for being organized and prepared and running great practices um, and, and understanding what they need from this experience. But then there's this accountability of, of coaches to parents and parents to coaches. 
And oftentimes I think we feel like, you know, some parents feel like, well, I paid my money, therefore I get whatever I want. No, that's not, that's not accountability. And that's not what you get, right? You get an opportunity for your child to play and, and grow um, as do all these other kids, right? But as a coach, I have to be accountable to parents to communicate, to let them and help them understand what's happening to see their child. I think that's what I have to be accountable for as well. And if we all have this accountability, good things will happen. Now, a uh, coach that I work with shared with me a really interesting um, letter, newsletter. And it's, a, it's, it's from a group called The Program, which is a group of ex-military people that do leadership training. And they wrote a great essay, a great newsletter on accountability. And, and what they talked about was that um, we often view accountability as a negative, as a calling out of people. Right, calling out bad behaviors. But really what accountability is, they said, is it's a calling up. It's a calling up to your teammates, to the parents, to the coaches, to your club, to your school, to reach a higher standard, a standard that we have agreed upon, right? That will that will help our, our children, help our athletes thrive, not just in sports, but in life. And that's the kind of accountability that we need. And accountability takes courage because it's much easier to just be nice, to say, you know, not say anything because I want to be nice or I don't want it to upset anyone. But what this newsletter talks about, and I love this quote, it says, um, it quotes um, former Google vice president of leadership, Fred Kaufman, quotes, nice is a form of laziness. Sometimes being nice, we, we're nice because we're too lazy to be courageous and to call people out for meeting the standards of the group. And in youth sport, in high school sport, in college sport, in professional sport, everyone involved, everyone who has influence over the people there is accountable. Is accountable to be called up to hold others accountable and to be held accountable themselves for the standards of that group. And it doesn't matter if you're coaching eight-year-olds or 28-year-old pros. When you let the standard slip and you don't have the, the courage to hold people accountable, bad things happen. And we've seen in sports, if you're watching this, I'm wearing my Manchester United sweatshirt here because I am a Man United fan and I'm recording this just after they won the Carabao Cup. And I think Manchester United this season has been a great um, example of accountability, of a new coach setting a high standard and holding his team accountable for not running enough in early season games to player behavior. You miss a meeting, you're out of the team. Um, you, you act a certain way on the sideline, you're out of the team, you're suspended, and eventually, it doesn't matter who you are, you're released because no player is more important than the team. No parent is more important than the group. And if you are a coach with high ethical standards and a philosophy that's based in, in, in reality, that's modern, that's, um, that you're doing the right thing and you're open and you communicate and um, you truly are reaching out to every child and, and, and trying to lift them up and hold them accountable to something. And if you're willing to be held accountable, then it is your duty to hold your athletes and their parents accountable to that same thing. When you've made enough deposits in that trust bank that you can make a few withdrawals and have the courage to say, this behavior is not helping your child, this behavior is not helping the group, that's leadership, that's coaching, and that's what we need more of, okay? So I hope you enjoyed my rant this week. Um, Thanks to all of you for listening. If you want more stuff like this, uh, let me know. And also, um, yeah, we got some amazing podcasts coming up. I think Jerry and I, we got about six or seven to record in the next two weeks here. Some guests that are just going to blow you away. Super, super excited. Last reminder, Way of Champions Conference, August 4th, 5th, and 6th, 2023. Get signed up for that right now. Early bird discount, only one more month. Save $100. And if you have a group of coaches, five or more, it's half price. 
So get a couple of coaches together and come out, especially if you live in Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, drive in, right? It's going to be an amazing, amazing weekend. Okay. Thanks to all our Patreon podcast champions. Thank you all for listening and, and sharing and reviewing the podcast. Your influence is never neutral. So go out there this week, change the world, make a difference. We'll see you again soon.